For blood test number four in 2023, I sent blood to True Diagnostic for epigenetic analysis, and we saw that my epigenetic pace of aging, as identified by Dunedin Pace, was 0.98. To put that into perspective, for every one year of chronological aging, that's one year of epigenetic aging. And you can see I've got that color coded in red, which is going in the wrong direction for someone whose stated goal is to break the human longevity record. So blood test number five results just came in, although I sent that sample in August or August 21st of 2023, it takes four to six weeks to get results. So did I have a bounce back test? And we can see that my Dunedin pace for the August test was 0.75. So indeed, I had a rebound in, in, the, in a good way, in, in the right direction. In other words, for every one year of chronological aging, that's 0.75 years of epigenetic aging. Now, where the story gets interesting or potentially interesting is that without that 0.98 test, my average Dunedin pace over the past three tests is 0.77. And that's potentially important because it would put me into the top nine overall in the Rejuvenation Olympics. More specifically, for people who have Dunedin pace scores, at least three Dunedin paces over six plus months, that will put me into a tie for number nine. So if you're interested in measuring your own epigenetic age, discount link in the video's description or epigenetic aging rate. Now where the story gets potentially interesting for a second time is that I also sent blood for NED analysis on July 5th at the same time when I sent the sample for epigenetic analysis and with the standard, standard chem panel. So I sent that sample for NAD analysis to Genfinity, also a discount link in the video's description. And on that day, NAD was 67 micromolar. Now that's in green because my baseline levels or, or that's in green because that's generally high based on age-related trends for Genfinity's cohort, but also relative to my baseline over many tests, Baseline NAD is 20 to 25 micromoles, so that's a two to three fold increase for NAD on the same day as that test. Now, what about NAD levels on the August 21st test? I also sent blood on that day for NAD analysis. And there, we can see that NAD went back to my baseline of about 22 micromolar, which is relatively low based on age-related or, or what's expected based on chronological age. And note that I didn't take uh, nicotinic acid, NA, or NAD, any other NAD precursors prior to that test. Whereas on the, for the top test, I, I took nicotinic acid, which is how I got that big bump. So these data raise the interesting, or at least interesting to me question, is NAD or intracellular, blood intracellular levels of NAD, is that significantly correlated with Dunedin pace? I now have five blood tests that correspond. So Dunedin pace and NAD measured on the same day. So is there a direct correlation? And that's what we can see here. So there is, it's significant. You can see that correlation coefficient is 0.97 and the p-value is less than 0.05. So in other words, a relatively higher blood intracellular level of NAD is significantly correlated with a higher Dunedin pace. And that's going in the wrong direction for the epigenetic pace of aging. Now, I wouldn't take these data too seriously. This is only five blood tests. We'll have to see how this story plays out over time. But it does indeed suggest that having NAD levels that are too high uh, may be bad for ep the epigenetic pace of aging, although that one test may be an outlier driving the, the whole correlation. Now, it also raises the question, is 40 micromolar for NAD the upper limit to not mess up Dunedin pace? And you can see that I've highlighted that with that red arrow as Dunedin pace was still around 0.8 or less. So that may be the upper limit. And in future tests for NAD and Dunedin pace, I'll explore whether, whether that's the upper limit. Maybe it's 35 micromolar. What's the, what's the limit for, or what's the optimal NAD where I can optimize uh, mitochondrial and potentially cellular function and not mess up epigenetic and, uh, epigenetic and other biomarkers? So stay tuned for that in upcoming videos. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've, all, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, NAD quantification, at-home metabolomics, or microbiome composition, green tea, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes ApoB, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, which I've got on right now, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you, hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.